In this video, I would like to go over the process of embellishing an AutoCAD rendering, uh, you know, and adding some details that for one reason or another you might not have been able to put into your digital model, you know, whether it was AutoCAD or Revit or some other program. Sometimes trying to get pictures on the wall and things like that just doesn't always go that well. So this is a student image from an AutoCAD class uh, fairly recently. Uh, it's a great image, it's a great model. So I just wanted to go through taking something like this and adding to it a little bit. So this image will be our starting point. And then we'll be getting it to, um, you know, something like this. Now, uh, I'm not saying that this rug or this artwork is particularly fantastic, but that's not really the point. So the point is, if you're, you know, wanting to add things, you know, change some colors, do things like that, um, you can always do it in a different piece of software. So this is the end point or something close to it that we'll be getting to. So here's our original image, and this is, you know, how it came out of AutoCAD. All right. So the first thing that you know you're probably going to want to do are make some adjustments. This image looks pretty good, but you know it might be a little bit dull. So using some adjustment layers to tweak this a little bit might be helpful. So what I'll do is come over to my adjustments tab here and pick a few of these options. So the first one I might grab would be levels. And notice that, um, as in a previous video, we see that that automatically creates a new layer called Levels. So we can come in here and make some tweaks. So I might come in and bring this up. So I'm bringing the right side, this white triangle, over. And it's almost like the clouds have passed and the, you know, the sun's coming in the windows a little bit. So it's automatically a little bit better there. And I could bring in this dark black triangle a little bit. You'll see how it's going from being overall kind of pale to a little bit richer. And frankly, the room seems a little bit warmer. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, if I you know, wanted to see if there's some difference, I might try the brightness and contrast. And you know, just play around with that a little bit, maybe making it overall a little bit brighter. Play with the contrast a little bit. Okay. And, you know, if you felt like your image needed it, you could also be going into curves, um, vibrance, or hue and saturation, for example. And I could be making the whole room more or less saturated. Lighter or darker, or tweaking any particular color. For example, I could come into the yellows and just take the yellow down a little bit if I felt like it was too yellow, something like that. Okay, so we see we have all those available to us and we can take this little eyeball and turn those layers on and off as we see fit. Okay, now that we've gotten the base image looking a little bit better, a little more vibrant, we can come in and make some additions. So if we look at this other image, you'll see that there's a little bit of artwork on the wall. It looks like the light's on here. There's a little color on this particular fixture, a fruit bowl, a rug on the floor, and so on. So I'm going to come into this one. And, you know, maybe the first thing I want to do is, um, you know, put a, a little bowl of fruit or something like that on the counter. What I will do is come up to the word file and place. So that's how you're going to bring images into Photoshop is file and place. So I have a file that I already cut the background away from the fruit um, in a very similar process to um, the floor plan video I made where we simply select the areas we don't want and do control X or edit and cut to get rid of them. Then when we bring in an image with a file in place it's going to come with these transform uh, frames around them. So if I want to grow or shrink this proportionally, I just hold down the shift key. If I don't, you'll see that I can stretch and squash this in any direction. So if you want to keep it proportional, hold down that shift key. OK. 
okay so I can you know kind of get this to where I might like it to be and you can determine how big or small you want that whatever you think looks right you know, maybe something like that and you'll have to hit enter when you get it about how you like it until you hit enter it's going to keep those frames around it I'll zoom in a little all right and you'll see over in the layers palette that the layer came in called fruit transparent that's the name of the file I had and it also has this little symbol in the corner so that's a smart object symbol whenever you bring something in with a file in place it brings it in as a smart object so that you can make some basic edits to it and change its size and things like that without degrading the image quality but it wouldn't let us do certain things to it like cut away at it erase at it or anything like that so keep it as a smart object as long as possible uh, but we can always rasterize it later if we want to you know so if i look at this I might be thinking that overall i'm fairly happy with the size and that type of thing so i'm not going to be making any significant changes to this particular image then I can right click on that layer and simply say rasterize it so that it kind of frees me up and makes it a little bit easier to work with later. I'm going to zoom back in here. Okay. And you know, this looks pretty good, but the, some of the problem is it's getting washed out. It's a white bowl on this very light counter and we can't really see it. So I'd like to put in a little bit of extra shadow. What I'm going to do is come over to my layers menu hold down the control key and click on the thumbnail. When I do that, it will select everything on that layer. So you control and click on the thumbnail and it selects everything on that layer. Then I am going to make a new one so I can come in and do a little bit of shadowing separately. I'm going to pick maybe for the color picker of a, a light gray color, you know, I'll keep it pretty simple because the countertop is kind of this gray, right? Then I will come in and perhaps I will use a paintbrush that is very soft and fuzzy and not too big. And then I can come in and kind of paint at this. I have my opacity at 21% right now. So that allows me to layer the effect on pretty nicely. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I might pick a slightly darker color to get you know just a little bit more variation there okay that looks pretty good so if I want to get rid of this marquee all I have to do is control D to deselect or come up to the top and say select then deselect so if I just zoom out so I can see that a little bit better see already it's it's starting to look a little bit um, you know more realistic in a way what I'd like to do is maybe give a little bit of a reflection on the counter. You know, I don't quite know what this material is. It's probably not too shiny, but that'll kind of give us that effect. So what I'm going to do is shift and select both of these layers. And I will say that I want to duplicate those layers. Okay. And now I have a copy of them. I'm going to drag both of those down below the original so that they're underneath. And then, frankly, at this point, I would like to merge those two layers. They're still selected, and I will say Merge Layers. So now they're just one thing. Then I can come up, say Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. And you'll see that it's a little bit tricky right now, but if I hold down the shift key and move them, I have an exact copy of this new one. And then I could take the opacity way down. I could even come in with an eraser, a little bit smaller, and maybe erase away at the fruit a little bit if I didn't think I was going to have such a clear reflection. Like maybe I can see the bowl but not the fruit quite so well. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so the bowl looks pretty good, the reflection looks pretty good, but it kind of looks like it's floating. Well, what we need to do is add a little bit of a shadow under there. 
All right, so I am going to control and click on that original fruit bowl again so that I have that selected. But then I actually want to be able to draw outside of here. So I'll do a select inverse and that will select everything but that fruit bowl. So if I zoom in a little bit, grab a paintbrush and I can keep it that nice gray color. I will make a new layer that I might name fruit bowl shadow and I can come underneath and you know paint a little bit of a shadow in there. If I don't like quite how it's looking, I can just grab an eraser, erase away at it a little bit, build up a little darker area. Okay. So, you know, we're getting something that's looking like that. So you can see how you could spend quite a bit of time uh, playing around with that. I might even come in on that original fruit bowl that I put in and use my blur tool that I have over in the toolbox and just take a slight little blur there. Maybe that was a little too high. Just to soften it up a little bit. Okay. So now we have, you know, some element on the countertop. And just to point out, if we wanted to move that, all I would do is select all of these layers involved by shift, selecting them all, and then using my move tool. And so now they're all together. So I could kind of scoot that around a little bit. I could merge them all together at some point if I wanted to, but right now I might want to, you know, tweak the colors or the shadows I put in, that kind of thing. Now that we have that, we might want to put some art on the walls. So we have, you know, a piece here and a piece here. Okay. What I'll do is another file in place. So file, place, and I will pick one of those images, for example, this train photo, and place. And it's bringing it in pretty big. So we can use this frame around it hold down the shift key and shrink it to get it the approximate size that we'll want it on the wall. You know, maybe something like that. Enter. But, you know, no matter what I do at this point, it still looks like a picture stuck on here. It doesn't look like it's integrating on the wall like this one does. What we do is go up to edit, transform, and perspective. That's going to allow us to tweak this so that it actually looks like it's on the wall, not just on the image. If I grab one of these corners and pull up, you'll see that if I do it very extremely, it's changing the angle so it looks like this is going back into space. So this looks like it's closer to me and these look like they're going away and this is off in the distance. So then what we can do is tweak this you know, a little bit to get it you know, about how we think it should look. And sometimes this takes multiple steps. So I just hit enter there. I'm going to do another transform, just control T. And you know, I might actually shrink that in a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. You know, that's looking pretty good. And when you get things uh, that you're trying to put into perspective, for example, this painting, we see that the line of the wall here is going back. So we want to make this one very similar, so they're parallel. Okay, and then we have the line across the bottom, and this one, it's looking not too bad. Not perfect, maybe, but not too bad. So we have, you know, something like that. It's looking pretty good. It could probably use a little more tweaking. All right, and we'll do another one over here. So that's a file and a place, and I'll grab this piece of art. Once again, coming in pretty big. So I'm going to scale that down, holding down the shift key, and get it so it's pretty close. Okay. 
Then I'll use Edit, Transform, Perspective to do a little bit of tweaking. And just a regular transform. to get that pretty close. Enter. And you know, if that looks pretty good to us, what we can do then is actually come in and get rid of this extra stuff around it. Okay, so we actually have, you know, the countertop here and this lamp. So we can right click on the layer and rasterize our two pieces of art once they look pretty good. And I could go in with a simple eraser take that hardness up and play with the size a little and erase away at that. Oh, my opacity is at 16. That's a little too low. Okay. What you might do also is just with this layer, temporarily take the opacity down on the entire layer. That allows you to see through at, you know, what you're trying to get rid of, for example. So I can come in now and a little bit more easily see where the edge of that lamp is. Okay, here. And here, if I hold on the shift key, I can make a nice straight line. And then I can take the opacity back up. So we have a piece of art in the back here, one up along the side. You know, so it's starting to look a little bit like this original image. Okay, so once we've gotten a few pieces of art in here, we might want to put a rug on the floor or something like that. That can be a little bit tricky, but it's essentially the same process of doing the art. So I'll go to File and Place one more time. Grab this rug. So we're seeing that the rug is just head on like this. And I might just shrink it up a little bit because I know it won't be, you know, that big. Then I will bring it over and play around a little bit, getting this into the right perspective. So we'll definitely be pinching it out this way, and that way. Okay, just a few more tweaks. It's looking pretty good. All right, and so we have something looking like that. It's a little bit off down here. As you can see here, I uh, got it nice and lined up. All right. All right, looking pretty good. So you have all basic elements in place. So even with the rug, I might, you know, rasterize that layer as well. And now we can add the things like shadows and lights and things like that to make it look a little bit more realistic.